All right, now in level one, um, we there's six levels um, that are broken down. The sixth one we can forget about right now, but the level one is street attacks. And street attacks, we primarily focus on the main um, attacks that you will see in everyday street scenarios. Level two is ground fighting, level three is knife fighting, and level four is handgun. And then level fives and six kind of gets more advanced than that. But um, today we're going to show you a few of these of each level to kind of show you exactly what we do. As you can see, we're all wearing just our regular everyday clothes, and that's what we really want this core combat because we want you to train in what you would normally be wearing when you need to. Martial arts usually have the geese or other types of uniforms. Street clothes in this program is typically our, our uniform. If you're law enforcement, military, or security, we you know, prefer you at least one class a month to wear that uniform because you need to train in how you do it. Now, like today, I am wearing my concealed carry. Um, everything in this program is pretty much based solely on professionals, whether you carry your weapon, everyday knives, things of that nature. So we have to ingrain these uh, certain scenarios that we do um, for everyday situations. So we have our handgun, we have our knives, um, they're training blades, but that's what we really incorporate. So level one is a street fighting scenario. Now, in every fight that we do, it's broken down into three levels, which is our mentality of everything. Level like the first part is victimizing the attackers. In Ryukyu Kempo, we always say there's no such thing as a block. Every block is technically a strike. It's still an attack. So that's what we incorporate in this program. When somebody throws a punch at us, we don't just want to block it and try to take them down. We want to victimize them to get their mindset from, I'm attacking you, to being the, the victim at that point. Once we have that advantage and they're on that defensive, we overlap our attacks to keep them on that defensive. And we fight to the point of reference, which you'll see here in a minute. The point of reference is a clinch position that we have control of them. After we keep overlapping our attacks, we look for an opening to do what is the last, what we call the objectives. The objectives is a simple takedown that we want to drop them at our feet to have control. We don't like to go to the ground if at all possible because I don't know on the street if this guy's cousin, brother, or boyfriend, whatever, is right behind me. I don't want to get too focused on him if somebody's going to come up and snuff me in the back of the head. So, victimize the attacker. Once you victimize the attacker, you have to overlap your attacks to keep them on the defensive until you can neutralize the situation by obtaining I on the street objectives. don't know what he's going to be doing to me. I don't know what skill level he is, so I don't have that time to try to size him up, do the jabs. I need to close that distance as uh, fast as possible to victimize him. Um, right now we're just going to do a typical haymaker punch that's common. It doesn't matter if it's a beer bottle, um, just a drunken haymaker, but that's what we do. Now most of the time he comes in with that haymaker, uh, we don't want to block. So we want to stop this. Now, uh, basically, we just say make an A-frame, and we use our full uh, forearm bones, which is the ulna bones, to attack the arms. For a pressure point enthusiast, we're actually trying to focus on lung 8 and pericardium 2. While we do this, we're actually stopping that punch in a block, but we're striking those points to deaden that arm as much as possible. Now, as you progress, we'd like to see you actually punch into that arm. So he throws that punch, bam, I want to attack this arm. At that moment, I have to immediately overlap my attacks. Usually from here, I'm going to what we call the point of reference. The point of reference is just a side clinch. What we do is we have an over-under, which is right here. I have the bottom part of his forearm underneath and the top here in a clinch position. I want to put his whole entire arm across my chest. This keeps him from you know, running away or anything, but if he's a big dude, there's going to be a fight. So I need to put this hand here across his neck. At this point, I have a nice little side clinch. This is very, very important. If I have a handgun over here or a knife over here, I don't want to do an over because he can reach into my pocket or something of that nature. So from here, I have weapon retention built in automatically. By stretching my body out and stretching his head that way, I keep that so he can't reach my handgun on this side. If he tries to reach over, it's going to be a really hard time for him to reach this, especially while I'm overlapping my attacks. So that's the point of reference. All it is is a side clinch underneath and then wrap around and then sticky manning his arm to my chest. Now if I just sit here and hold this and start wrestling him, his size is going to overcome this. So if he starts fighting me, I have to really start laying into him to get his mind off from this. So when we overlap our attacks, we're not just overlapping our attacks to overlap our attacks. I just attacked upstairs. My next position is I want to attack his legs. Legs are a common overlooked thing. So I'm going to start blasting with some knees into his legs. 
Freshman enthusiast, gallbladder 20, uh, sorry, gallbladder 30, 132 in the legs, the spleen 11 points on the side of the left leg. Those are great viable points. But I don't want to sit here and just hold this and hope this does it. He's going to start fighting. So immediately, I start loosening him up by throwing these knees. Usually after the third knee, he'll try to put his forearm down to block those knees. His legs will start moving back because those knees hurt. Now, while his mind is down here, I'm going to attack upstairs, usually, into an objective type. So that haymaker comes in, I blast into it, I immediately shoot here. I like to strike the back of the head, the gallbladder 20, uh, large chest and 18 points, to give him a good little zap. I want to drop my elbow down low so he can't turn his head and bite me. From here, I start blasting these knees. Now while he's trying to defend that, I will go into an uh, objective. The simple objective we do is a face smash and a, and a sweep. So I go one, two, three, face smash, take his leg out, and I drop him to my feet. I'm just going to switch sides here real quick just for video purposes. Once he goes down, he's here. Notice I don't want to get on top of him. I want to be able to look around to see if there's any other attackers. I can drop my knees. I can punch him in the face. I can do whatever I want. If I'm a law enforcement officer, at this point I can take him into a cuffing position and finish it there. If his buddies start coming towards me, I can really make it a bad day for this guy. So here, he's down. I can do whatever I want at this point. He's at my feet. I don't want to throw him too far away because the second he hits there, he's going to stand right back up and I have to re-engage the attack. So back to the top. He comes in. One, two, three, and then I can snuff him out fairly quick and easy. So I'm victimizing the attacker here. I'm overlapping my attacks here until I can get the objective, which is taking him down to my feet in a controlling position. We'll just run through a few attacks. If he throws a straight punch, everybody in martial arts knows how to get off the X and parry. We want to add that attack right here. Liver 14, spleen 21, spleen 17. All these are great points. After here, I can do a couple things. I can go to an augment or an alternative point of reference, which is here. My shoulder acts as my forearm previously and traps the underside of his arm. Why this arm pulls his elbow in tight and controls the upper side. Once again, point of reference. Or I can just do this little whoop de woo into a knee. So straight punch here. One, two, three, take down into an objective. Say if he's choking me from the side. Most of the time, they're either pushing or pulling. But the first step we do is we step out, ring the bell, which is shot to the groin, immediately fall with an elbow and cut into the point of reference. So we train this. If he pushes forward, I'm going to step out, come underneath, ring his bell, elbow, point of reference, follow up with the objectives. If he's you know, choking from the front, victimized while defending, I pluck his arms because this is the primary danger, knee to the groin, shoot to the face, point of reference, follow up with the objectives. As you can see, almost any kind of attack you do standing up, you can always lead into the point of reference. It doesn't even matter if you're overwhelmed at first, and you get to a shell position, he's throwing punches, I can still move in until I get to that point of reference and fight through it. That will lead us to uh, the, the next part of the program, which is ground fighting. 